Hi, it's Jim from Propeller. Today I'll show you how you can activate your new set of arrow points and walk you through Propeller's different processing methods. To begin with, I'm going to show you how to activate your new arrow points. First, we're going to go to PropellerArrow.com and click Login. Enter your Propeller account email and password here and click Sign In. In the top navigation bar, click Arrow Points and then Activate New Set. In the box with your arrow points, you received a quick start guide to help you hit the ground running. Go ahead and get that out as you'll need it to get set up. It looks like this. This is where you can find an 8-digit activation code. If you ordered arrow points recently, you may have more than one activation code. Make sure you enter it here and click Next. We're going to choose a license to apply our activated arrow points to and click Activate. If you want to change the name of your arrow point set, you can do that here. You can also adjust your default units. Automatic units are defined by the projected coordinate system, but you can manually switch between meters, international feet, or U.S. survey feet. In the arrow point dashboard, you can see details for each of your arrow points like ID number, battery level, and date and time of last connection. Since your arrow points are new, there is limited data to show. You can also manage user permission for each set of arrow points. To invite a new user, just type in their email address and click Send. Since we have just activated these arrow points, we don't have any missions listed on this set quite yet. Once you fly using arrow points as your ground control points, and they automatically connect to the propeller platform over Wi-Fi, your flight will show up as a list of missions under your flights. You will be able to search for individual missions under your flights in the search bar. Sort missions by latest to earliest process date and show archived missions. If for any reason you want to reprocess your data, you can do that by duplicating your mission here. If you want to clear a mission from your flights, say either you ran a duplicate of it or are finished processing it and you want to keep your list nice and tidy, you can archive the mission here. You can access your archived missions by clicking Show Archived in your flight settings. When you are ready to process your data collected from the arrow points, scroll down to the mission you are ready to process and select Process Now. Here you will see your processing method options, Propeller Correction Network, Global Survey Benchmark, Local Site Survey Benchmark, Precise Point Positioning, and Rhinex Upload. I'll cover these in detail in a few seconds. Once your mission is finished processing, you'll receive a notification in your email with details of each flight. Each arrow point will report its coordinates in two different coordinate systems, a geographic system with ellipsoid heights and a projected system with vertical datum heights. You'll also get details on the number of points recorded and a look at accuracy through data variants. Now let's take a look at each of these processing methods. When you are ready to process your mission using the Propeller Correction Network, click Process Now. Go up and select Propeller Correction Network. Before your flight, we recommend that you visit the Propeller Correction Network page to check if you are within range. Enter your location into the search bar to reference it against the Propeller Correction Network. Here is our marker, and in this case red is good. We can see that we are within range. Now we can go back to our mission and click Process. In the top left corner, you will be able to see that the mission is now processing. The mission will complete processing within five minutes of the correction data becoming available. While it's processing, you'll be able to see the capture information for each point and view the timeline. Remember, it is important that the first point you place is the last point to be picked up to ensure overlap is within range. Alright, the mission processing is done. 
You'll also receive an email to let you know the mission has completed processing. Each point now has a set of geographic coordinates including latitude, longitude, and ellipsoid height, and projected coordinates including easting, northing, and vertical datum height. Quality shows measurements about how accurate the data is, the number of points the arrow points recorded, how many points were used to compute the position, baseline distance, and variance. If you want to change your coordinate system, click on the plus sign to open the dashboard. Select the drop-down and find the zone you want to change it to. We're going to change this to the Colorado Central Coordinate System. And you can see the projected coordinates have changed to reflect the Colorado Central Coordinate System. If you use Propeller for your image processing, click on Upload Images, which will open a new page. Here, you'll drag and drop your geotagged photos to upload. If you want to do your own photogrammetry processing, you can download your coordinates in CSV, Simple CSV, PDF, or KML formats. To jump back to your flights, click the back arrow here, where you will see a list of your missions, including the mission that was just processed. You can also download to those formats we just reviewed from this dashboard in addition to duplicate and archive. When you are ready to process your mission using a global survey benchmark, click Process Now. You may choose this method if you are out of range of the correction network or if all of your data is referencing a survey mark. Your arrow points can be calibrated to an existing permanent survey mark, including state marks, by placing an arrow point over the mark and uploading the mark's position with your arrow points data. To begin, select an arrow point for which you know the coordinates in the thumbnail tab. Now let's scroll down. Here you can select a coordinate system, geographic or projected. You can also change your measurement units and select whether you want to measure from top of arrow point or from ground. Here you can also find all the available datums. If you'll switch between geographic and projected, you will see a change to easting, northing, and vertical datum height. In this example, I am going to use a projected coordinate system. I've chosen a projection which is Colorado Central. The vertical datum here is correct. And here, I have entered my easting, northing, and datum height. With all this filled in, I am ready to process. In the top left corner here, we can see that it is processing. If we scroll down, we can see details of our known point right here, and all other points were determined relative to this benchmark. Once the processing is done, we will see latitude, longitude, and ellipsoid height for each of our arrow points. We can see that the processing is just completed, if you want to change your coordinate system after you've processed the data, perhaps a different Colorado projection, you can easily do that here. Again, you can change your measurement units post-process, but I'm going to leave it on U.S. survey feet for now. Let's take a look at the details of our known point. Now we have the latitude, longitude, and ellipsoid height for the known point. Here is the easting, northing, and datum height that I entered. If we scroll down to arrow point number two, we also have those same metrics relative to each arrow point. Again, you can download your points in CSV, a simple CSV, PDF, and KML to use with other software packages. With Local Site Survey, you can ensure your drone data is completely aligned with your machine control, design, and other site data by using the Local Site Calibration configured on your propeller site. When you are ready to process your mission using the Local Site Survey method, click Process Now. The platform will prompt you to select an arrow point on the map that was placed at a known location. In this example, we're going to select Lucky Number 7. Next, you will need to select a site. If you haven't set up a site yet, 
I'll show you how to create one. Click the Viewer tab. Down one row on the far left, we're going to click Site and select the plus sign to create a new site. A new page will open and you're going to enter your site name and then click Create Site. You'll see your new site name appear. Under Local Coordinate System, select Click to Configure. We need to drag and drop a Trimble JXL calibration file in. If you used a different calibration format, contact our support team who can configure this for you. Once the file is uploaded, check your JXL calibration data here and click Save. Let's click back to Viewer and select the site we just created, the RM Quarry. We are measuring from top of arrow point, so it stays the same. We are going to change meters to U.S. survey feet and enter our easting, northing, and height. Now that we have entered the details of our known point, we are ready to click Process. We can see that the site is finished processing. If we scroll down and take a look at point number one, we can see the coordinates have been populated. Let's take a look at our known point, arrow point number seven. Here are our local site coordinates, easting, northing, and height. Let's go back to our list of missions by clicking the arrow at the top of the dashboard. Again, if you want to do your own photogrammetry processing, you can download your coordinates in CSV, Simple CSV, PDF, or KML formats, as well as duplicate and archive. When you're ready to process your mission using Precise Point Positioning, click Process Now. You can choose to use Precise Point Positioning, but we only recommend using this method as a last resort as it does not provide globally accurate coordinates. For this method, we'll use precise GPS clock and orbit information to calculate one arrow point's position. This will be used as a correction base station for the other points in the flight. Processing will be completed within five minutes of the data becoming available. Check this box here and click Process. You can see that it is processing. This is done. We can see that nine of 10 arrow points have quality data. If you look closely on the map, one of the arrow points has a red line around it indicating that it is the point with low quality. We have a data variance beyond what we would like. Everything else is good. Again, from the top of the page, we can export points in CSV, Simple CSV, PDF, and KML, as well as duplicate and archive. If you want your drone data to have the same reference point as your other data, or want to access a network we are not yet integrated with, you can import a Rhinex file with your arrow points. Select Rhinex Upload as your processing method. From here, you can either select a file to upload or drag and drop. Once the file is uploaded, you will need to enter your datum point. In this case, NAD83 or Colorado Central. It's also very important to double check that the Rhinex file timeline matches the exact time of your flight. Looks like we're good to go and ready to click process. Our arrow points have now been processed using a Rhinex file or a user supplied correction data, as it says here. If we scroll down, we can see latitude, longitude, and ellipsoid height easting, northing, and datum height for each of our arrow points. Once again, this dashboard view allows you to download your points in CSV, Simple CSV, PDF, and KML, or duplicate and archive.